so it's um, 8 8 8 32 a.m. Uh, 11th of November 2020 Wednesday right yeah so I gotta I gotta go to the um uh, GP to get a referral to see my uh, psychologist and also get a mental health plan I should also collect my referral to see my psychiatrist which I, which is I got this referral months ago but I haven't collected it because uh, I haven't gone, gone to the medical center in person I could have asked my mom because I did um, get her to get some of my prescriptions but anyway I'm going today something I've been procrastinating from doing this for over a year now going in person I mean I only had like a telephone uh, consultation a few months ago or something uh, but but because I needed my prescriptions um, I think the reason I'm speaking kind of funny is because I used the electric toothbrush which is very good and maybe it's like something like it's I don't know it's, it feels very strange so I've seen some videos about the NDIS and uh, some of the problems it's had you know um, being implemented and all that I can understand that I can uh, I understand why uh, you know I had I had issues too um, uh, you know accessing the NDIS and um, uh, see I'm getting a mental block now because I'm getting triggered so um, I can't think properly my because <laughs> uh, I'm getting this stress thinking about this um, so what was I saying oh yeah so I was seeing the video and I'm like usually when they talk about the NDIs usually they show people who are like who have um, down syndrome or um, some people are like blind or um, so you, you see like all these things and you're like but I've got psychosocial disability and, and psychosocial disability like when they first uh, um, considered I, it's a, it is my understanding that when they were initially developing the NDIS mental health was not included in the NDIS it's only later on that they included mental health as a as a uh, a category of disability and the it's it's like they they turn you know it's a psychosocial disability because the NDIS does not uh, provide funding for mental health treatment you know, like uh, psychiatrists because that is the responsibility of the uh, health system uh, the NDIS will help and the NDIS will fund uh, impairments related to the like related the NDIS will help with dealing with issues that are in, uh, a result of um, that you know that have a functional impairment on your social and economic capacity which is a result of your mental health condition so they might help with, uh, for instance, doing group therapy, uh, having support people to, uh, uh, you know, help you um, go out of places. Uh, uh, they might do a little bit of counseling, I think. Um, you know, like developing your skills and uh, so th 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 that's what the NDIS funds. So, uh, you know. People who have a psychosocial disability, they're not, um, 
it's it's not like a very it's usually not very visible it's not like you're on a wheelchair or something you know it's not a physical disability it's a psychosocial one so like so you know you know it's it, like all mental health related things it's not like visible it's, it's, so you know what I mean uh, let me see. MDS. Let me. Uh, there is some. I saw some videos on psychos. Yes, it, look at this. Some of these people, they look like they're normal. You know, uh, <laughs> they're normal, but you know, they have psychosocial yeah. disability. Um, so I might link some of those videos. You can search for it, Psychosocial NDIS YouTube. So, yeah. I don't know, I just thought of, sort of... <gasps> yeah, I just thought I'd mention that because, um... When it comes to mental health uh, related um, problems, you know, like... Um, related uh, functional impairments um, like mental health in general like because it's not you can look at a person and they might be you know dressed properly you know they might be you know they might look okay but you can't tell just from the way the person looks on the outside whether or not they have uh, mental health issues you know uh, usually people who have mental health problems they, they have problems you know taking care of themselves uh, physically like for instance for instance, I haven't taken a shower in more than a week <laughs> uh, yesterday I took a sh uh, I took a, like a hot like I washed my bottom area that area so <laughs> uh, but I haven't taken a shower in more than a week so I, so I had I haven't been eating properly too and my room hasn't been cleaned you know there's all these clothes and stuff that I, I've been in. so what I'm trying to say is mental health psychosocial disability is real it's a real thing. Um, you know, <laughs> and, and and people sh and I I just want I just want people to respect that. Like it is actually a real thing, and uh, people can suffer a lot. Uh, like. You know, the, the one, another thing is that you can have fluctuating episodes, you know, like for, for like, uh, you know, some days, for instance, uh, or, so, or for a period of time, you know, you might be feeling okay, but then after that, you might go, go into a period of like a really bad mental health, uh, you know. So the, the NDIS, I think they recognize that there can be fluctuating periods and they, that's good you know they actually uh, um, took in um, they made consultations with relevant mental health organizations to uh, make these changes so I and recently they added uh, a, a, a support item you know different types of support it's called it's called a psychosocial recovery coach and that is whom I'm trying to um, thank you, social recovery coach. So this is like a, a yes. Oh man, do I have to download it? Uh, anyway, psychosocial uh, recovery coach is like someone who can help you. Uh, <laughs> What is the... it is a PDF file. Oh man. A recovery coach is an NDIS funded worker that has mental health knowledge. 
a recovery coach will uh, spend time with you and people important to you to get to know you and understand your needs, help you to find out about different services and supports and how these can help you, help you get support from mental health services, help you better understand the NDIS and support you with the NDIS. You can choose a recovery coach with lived experience. A recovery coach with lived experience has their own lived experience of mental ill health and recovery and are able to use this experience to inform their work. So the person I spoke to had had a lived experience and um, I think that's kind of good because then they might understand where you're coming from. Uh, So, uh, how much does the recovery coach cost? The recovery co coach costs eighty dollars ninety cents an hour in the daytime during weekdays, and yeah. So, so that that money, yeah, I have funding for for my plan, and I use that to pay this person to work with me. So I guess I will link to that PDF file. Uh, and uh, anyway, oh, you could Google it uh, in the eyes. Uh, so, yeah, um, yeah, so. Uh, yeah, again, you know, that whole, uh, I was thinking about the whole imposter syndrome <laughs> and uh, my fraud, I hate using the word fraud, fraud, fraud sounds like a, a legal thing, you know, when I say fraud, I'm talking about a feeling, I feel like a fraud, not I am, so I feel like uh, you know that I'm not um, sick enough or whatever um, but that's something that's the that is sort of tied to my own sense that I am I don't deserve to be helped because I have this this kind of feeling like I don't deserve help or I don't you know I, because I'm not a good person <laughs> like I feel like I'm not a good enough human being or to deserve help and also like when I see these people with like who are you know in wheelchair and then I'm like I'm comparing myself to them and thinking well you know I don't look those people look they visibly look disabled. They they look sick, and and I can understand why they would want well, this. You know, they would the they have NDIS support. But look at me. I don't visibly look like I'm sick. Oh yeah, okay. There's some stuff with my self care issues and all that. But you know, I can talk and and stuff like you know. So I don't look visibly look like I like I need help. But again, that's the thing is like. You can't tell, like, just by looking at a person whether or not they need help. You have to, like, uh, spend time with them and, you know, you have to listen to what they're saying. Uh, you know, so, <laughs> again, uh, mental health is not usually a visible thing. Yeah, some people who have schizophrenia, uh, you know, they can behave in strange ways. I mean, people who have depression can behave in strange ways for like instance if someone's coming someone knocks on the door I get very anxious like on the outside door I'm like who's that uh, and you know and I don't like going to open the door um, interacting with people anyway like I said um, I don't need to compare myself with people who have physical issues. Um, why am I feeling this kind of uncertainty and doubt? Why am I always... 
is it because like something good is happening to me like I'm, I'm receiving these supports and this help and, and because something good is happening to me I have to like sabotage it or, or, or I have to keep engaging this negative thinking um, is it a type of catastrophizing like uh, I'm thinking like oh this is not going to work out and uh, I'm a fake and uh, <laughs> I don't know why I'm doing that I don't know why I am doing this I, f I feel like it might be related to the fact that I don't want to feel secure. Like I have, I have a hard time feeling secure. So I don't want to like, you know, I don't want to like feel comfortable and secure. I don't want to feel like people are going to help me. Or I, I don't want to. I, I find it difficult. It's not like I don't want to. It's like I find it difficult to feel supported or cared for um, I feel like I feel like I like that imposter I feel like they, they know like are you is this really happening to me do people am I really receiving these supports am I you know uh, yeah so uh, yeah, so it's like this thing where I find it difficult to feel good about my situation uh, without thinking about negative things. I, I heard in someone in the video said that uh, this Brene Brown, I think she's like a uh, some kind of a sociologist or something and she said like uh, this person in the video was talking about Brene Brown and what Brene, Brene Brown said was that the one of the most difficult things people find people have in all her experiences working with people is that people find it very difficult to enjoy their life <laughs> I think I might have mentioned this um, people find it very difficult to accept good things when they're happening to them and maybe I've got similar issues where if, if, if something good is happening to me like for instance receiving all these supports and you know planning to move out and and and, and, and thinking about uh, you know it, it feels really exciting thinking about moving out and li living on my own it's like the, it's like the, 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 you know when you're usually when people move out when they're young the, it's like an exciting thing for me it's much later in life but I still have the same kind of excitement and, and you know because I feel like these positive things where I'm looking forward to doing things I feel I find it difficult to uh, accept and enjoy it so I feel so, so I engage in this thinking like oh I'm not good enough uh, you know I'm phony and I'm a fraud or whatever because <laughs> I, I don't want to feel like I find it difficult to feel like like I deserve this help or I deserve this happiness or I deserve an optimistic future or I, I find I find it difficult to accept that I I can be happy and it's okay for me to be happy and it's okay for me to feel supported um, I find it difficult to be in that place without sort of thinking about all the negatives and the how like oh this is going to be taken away from me uh, you know and the disappointment and things I mean in a sense yeah it can be taken away from me I mean uh, you know you know the government could sort of uh, get rid of the NDIA NDIS because you know, they can pass legislation or my disability allowance may be cancelled or whatever you know um, so all of these things can be taken away nothing is certain and I guess one of the tasks of dealing with this OCD issue of doubting is to actually live with uncertainty as was mentioned in one of those videos I mentioned linked yesterday in my previous video But still, 
I want to learn how to live with uncertainty and I want to embrace and enjoy good things when they're happening to me. I want to feel like it's okay for me to be supported. Like I don't have to be like on my own. <laughs> I feel like I've got to be on my own. Uh, you know, I find, like I don't want to be disappointed. I, I find it very difficult with disappointment. So. Uh, anyway, so what should I name this video? I thought it uh, talking about the NDIS and uh, man, I'm so tired. Making the, making these videos is exhausting. Talking about the NDIS and. Uh, Coming to terms with my mental health. <laughs> uh, talking about the NDIS and mental health. Yeah. Mm, acceptance. Oh. <sighs> I don't know. I'll think of some kind of a dial.